Hello YouTube, this is Sam from Tide Schooling. In this session of the video, we're actually going to talk about the colon, which is also called as large intestine. So your large intestine is the distal part of your gastrointestinal tract, extending from your cecum over there to the anal canal. Down there, let me remove this small intestine first in order to show you the completed structures. I mean okay hide the structure right we have removed this small intestine now we got the colon or large intestine this big structure you can see down here in the picture so it receives digestive food from your small intestine from which it absorbs water and electrolytes and to form the feces so anatomically the colon can be divided into four parts that is your ascending colon this is your ascending colon this is your transverse colon this is your descending colon and the last part is your sigmoid colon. So remember that the colon, colon or the uh, large intestine begin, <clears throat> uh, is one, 150 centimeter in length. The complete length of it is 150 centimeter and can be divided into four parts that is proximal to distal. And uh, first we'll talk about the first part that is your ascending colon, this part. <clears throat> The ascending colon, sorry, the ascending colon, the colon which begin, the colon begins as the ascending colon, which is actually a retroperitoneal structure. Regarding top, talking about the uh, colon, remember that the ascending colon and the descending colon are both retroperitoneal, but the transverse colon and sig sigmoid colon are intraperitoneal. So. Uh, it's ascend superiorly from your cecum. This is part of the cecum. When it meets the right lobe of the liver, down here exactly where it meets the right lobe of the liver, it turns a 90 degree. You can see it turns a 90 degree to move horizontally. This turn, this turn is called as right colic flexure or the hepatic flexure. This is because of liver we call it the hepatic flexure. Uh, taking the uh, right turn, that's why we call it the right colic means colon and flexure turn. And marks the start of your transverse colon. So this is now your transverse colon. So your transverse colon extends from the right colic flexure right over here to the spleen. In, in there we have got the spleen we haven't shown it's not shown here but at the end of the spleen where it again turns in here it again turns 90 degree to point inferiorly this turn is known as left colic flexure because it's on the left side or you can call it splenic flexure because the spleen is located just above it so here the colon is also attached to your diaphragm by a ligament which is called phrenico-colic ligament remember that the transverse colon is the least fixed part of the colon and is variable in position you know it can dip into the pelvis in tall thin individuals so unlike the ascending colon and descending colon the transverse colon is intraperitoneal and is enclosed by the transverse mesocolon which is a part of the your peritoneum now let's talk about the descending colon we're coming down there so after the left colic flexure the colon moves inferiorly towards the pelvis and it's called the descending colon your descending colon i have already told you is actually a retroperitoneal so in the majority of individuals but it's located anteriorly to the left kidney passing over its left border now let me put up the uh, where we got this one right over there you can see the kidney right over there we've got the kidney on the posterior side of it when the colon begins to turn medially it becomes the sigmoid colon right over there as it turns medially it becomes your sigmoid colon this is your sigmoid colon right removing the urogenital parts and we are again back to work so your sigmoid colon down here you can see i've highlighted it and this is your sigmoid colon and your sigmoid colon this part is attached to the posterior pelvic wall you can see that it is attached to the posterior pelvic wall by a mesentery which is called the sigmoid mesocolon which i haven't shown here in this diagram so the long length of the mesentery permits the part of the colon to be particularly mobile all right this is uh, it regarding the anatomy basic anatomy of the colon